Alright guys, welcome back to Valorant News. Massive rumours and reports yesterday as to the future of Evil Geniuses. Rumour has it that the entire Evil Geniuses starting roster from last season that won the World Championship will be gone from the team with only Potter the coach remaining with a brand new roster around her for the new season. But will that even still be Evil Geniuses? Some questions have been raised whether EG Spot might be gone and replaced by another organisation that could well have been interested in signing the guard players not that long ago. Very much interested to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. I, uh, there is no evidence behind this, by the way, from Aldrin Media, just to clarify that SK Rossi will be joining him with gaming, so it's not going to happen. But um, there was some rumours lately about what SK Rossi was going to do. So I guess we'll stay tuned for that, but I don't think Edward's sick man is particularly likely. A Vova, though, I thought it was quite cool to see him sign a contract. I know that lots of people after his stint not that long ago on, you know, G2 and stuff like this, looking for, um, what well, good success for him going forwards. And of course, he was on Team Heretics most recently than just that. Also, a big news on, what well, the M80 side with BCJ. We've known their full roster for some time, really. We've seen it in practice for a little bit of time. Of course, Nitro returning from Counter-Strike to play for these guys. Definitely one of the teams on paper that should be a massive favourite to try and take down Ascension. You know, they've still got Nismo there. They've still got Koala Noob there. They've still got Xander, of course, as well. So that's their team, and they needed to round them out with one more player. And from early days, there were reports that BCJ, formerly Exet, and of course, let's not forget, formerly Evil Geniuses, the most recent season, was getting trialled with the guys, and uh, well, therefore, if that went well, that's what they were going to do. And yeah, it seems this is determined. It's pretty cool, actually, to see Psycho as well, who was on M80 with the guys back then, is um, kind of working with BCJ. And in some respect, okay, he's not necessarily so involved with their Valorant project as he um, has been previously, but he's their, like, esports vice president or whatever they call him over there with those respective roles. So cool stuff for BCJ. I know a lot of people are rooting for his success this season, and as he says, so many people to think with the announcement and hopefully it goes very well for BCJ and the team this year as he says though I can promise this team I won't stop grinding or I can promise this team won't stop grinding until we come home with the Ascension trophy this is the big one there's lots of teams down there in Ascension who want to win it that's uh, what M80 nearly achieved last year and this is what Disguised Toaster I remember he said look well this year the guard are probably going to win so that is removing one competitor next year M80 might win and that removes one more competitor and then eventually Disguised Toast DSG GT will be the best team left. But this is, um, you know, the way Mate might have to think about it. You know, a lot of the guard players, they are now in tier one again. The issue is that, well, while that has been the case, there might be certain other players that might not be in tier one and therefore tier two might be more competitive, especially if we actually don't have 11 teams because the theory would be you've got your 10 franchise teams, your 10 partner teams, one gets ascended and therefore that's 11 teams. So you've got five less top players in tier two, which increases the likelihood that this team could win. If, however, Evil Geniuses as an organization get their partnership spot revoked, which is definitely a possibility, but we'll see how that might go in the near future, and we'll discuss it in the coming minutes, then that would not make Ascension any easier necessarily. But regardless, M80 should be one of the big favorites going into the new year. There was also this news from Gen G, Caron, a player that um, a lot of people aren't particularly familiar with. I'm, I'm not exactly sure if they got him from their trials. It's a little bit unclear what role he'll run as well, because he's run the jet, he's run the Sentinel. They might have him on the controller, but yeah, pretty interesting what Gen G are cooking up there. And we know that there's been some organizations that have done trials and various things to sign certain players. There was also organization with regard to RNG, when I first heard RNG, I thought, oh, that's Renegades, right? The Australian team. But that's not the case. RNG, I think a lot of people consider these guys to be effectively like the EG of the Chinese region. A very controversial organization with many issues. And, um, well, that's one example that they talk about right exactly here. But speaking of evil geniuses, they actually dropped into the Shadow Realm category of the uh, <laughs> of the Platjack guys way too early tier list for the season. So easier down here. They've got, you know, Fnatic, Paper X, Leviathan, even Loud and they've got DRX up there as well, which is pretty cool because, yeah, DRX with their full roster, they tend to be top six internationally, basically top four internationally sometimes, wherever they go. But, um, well, I want to see how they get on at this uh, soon upcoming Africa TV tournament when you've got Sentinels, you've got Paper X there, so that's going to be an exciting group. But NRG, they're looking top of eight, apparently, and look, this is, again, way too early analysis, but it isn't actually too early because especially when we look at Evil Geniuses and what they might be doing, whether they even actually exist, is getting sent to the Shadow Realm 
actually pretty accurate in terms of what this roster is going to be next season. Because James of F yesterday, of course, um, now becoming a pretty reputable leaker in the scene, comes out with this. Let FlyQuest cook. Now, just keep this caption in mind for the moment because there's a lot to say on FlyQuest, EG, and stuff like this. So anyway, this is the screenshot of a seeming scrim in agent select as we see here in a custom game between the Sentinels team and what looks like a mixed bag of a roster. So firstly, we'll just clarify Sentinels. John QT, Zekken, Kaplan, the coach, Zelsis, Sassy, Tens. So um, that's six players. Again, just if we needed any more confirmation that there is no Pancada in this team, here it is. I mean, it's very clear what's going on at Sentinels right now. However controversial that might be and might continue to be. And you might say, oh, well, you know, plus one, that's got to be um, Pancada. But that doesn't add up because Potter is the head coach of this team, unless she's playing again, which I somewhat doubt. And then the plus one apparently was Moose. That was uh, the rumor going around that actually it was GMD, Stella, Baby Bay, Corey, and Moose was the team of five. So um, that we're playing against Sentinels in this one. So this is pretty wild. And at the end of the day, it's very similar in many ways to what we saw rumored not that long ago with Stella was rumored to be trialing with evil geniuses. Corey was rumored to be trialing with evil geniuses. Baby Bay, I think, was rumored to be trialing with evil geniuses as well. GMD has some experience with some of these guys, formerly of TSM. So what do you guys think about that team? GMD, Stella, Baby Bay, Corey, Moose. Apparently that was the team of five they were practicing with but is that actually evil geniuses and um there were some rumors as to whether the fifth was not moose right because why would it be moose let's be honest here why is com not there why is jorgamo not there because the last few days the main theory has been that demon one is gone somewhere maybe nrg Ethan is gone somewhere, maybe also NRG. Bustio is gone, we're pretty sure 100 Thieves in the near future. So the theory was, okay, Com and Jorgamo are surely going to stay, and then Stella is going to come in as the IGL maybe, and then they're going to find two more. But that does not seem to be the case, because even as uh, we say maybe Com on the initiator, but apparently that might not be the case anymore. Jorgamo you'd think would be good enough to get offers, but the issue is if you're Jorgamo or Com, where do you go? Other teams have chosen their rosters. Sure, they can change their minds. And maybe even G2, who have signed the guards, who wanted Giorgamo and settled for Leaf, might think, well, if we're not going so well, that might be something they consider even now. But the rumor is that the entire roster is gone. And I don't know why, and I don't know where. And but the idea that, like, all of these guys... Now, of course, Boostio, Demon 1, Ethan, if there was organizational chaos, which there's always going to be, and Evil Genius is they're going to end up somewhere good. But for Com and uh, Jorgamo, the players that were probably somewhat less in demands, now if they're gone, where do they go? Are they leaving because they have offers? What's going on? Feel bad for Potter as well, because poor Potter, man, like she worked with this team all season after all the criticism and um, you know, made the controversial change. Demon 1 coming in for BCJ. They win the world championship. Unbelievable scenes. And now she's back down there again at working with another very questionable team that is um, going to have a hard time making waves, I'm sure, this season. The other possibility, though, is that, well... Is it even EG anymore? And this is what you might think, because it's actually quite common that a World Championship winning team breaks apart shortly afterwards for whatever reason, but it's almost unheard of, I would say, that the entire team goes. Sometimes the World Championship winning team makes changes, someone gets poached, or they think they can improve for various reasons because other teams are getting better, but almost always, some of the players stay. The idea that every player is gone, with the exception of the coach, is wild. So the other alternative, and this is why we looked at when uh, Jim Zaveff said, let FlyQuest cook is that, maybe this isn't EG anymore, and maybe it's another organization such as FlyQuest. We know that there were rumors when the guards were trying to come in and they were getting rejected because the guards said no, G2 and FlyQuest, two organizations were interested in signing these guys. G2 got that deal done, but clearly FlyQuest were keen to get in and have shown intentions for their willingness to get into the Valorant world. And we've seen rumors the other day that Evil Geniuses have left the League of Legends Championship Series, it would not be out of the realms of possibility that they would also leave the um, the Valorant Championship Tour, I guess is technically what it is, with the VCT. So what does that mean? Would Riot say, you know what, okay, EG, we're going to kick you out or you're going to 
leave, whatever. You're a terrible organization. We don't want to be a partner with you anymore. So we're going to go back to 10 teams and that's going to be it. But what does that mean for Potter and those guys? Because it's an incredibly bad look on all sides if the world championship winning organization is not even there anymore and all of the players are on a different team or elsewhere. So maybe if Riot have done their due diligence on FlyQuest and feel like FlyQuest as an organization is a potentially good partner in the league because they had to approve G2 at the end of the day to buy the guard team and come through and be, you know, a guest team. Now, FlyQuest, though, if they were to come through, they would maybe end up being a full-time partner team. So I don't know if that's particularly likely, to be honest. And it seems potentially more likely to me that they will either just go to 10 or that EG will stay. But who knows? And maybe the reason why that this screenshot is with none, apparently, of the old school EG players, apart from Potter, is because this isn't really going to be EG anymore. But uh, yeah, very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. NRG, of course, it's a good day for NRG fans because the more that we see rumors that EG or FlyQuest or whatever this team is going to be going forward and all the chaos that is probably going to unfold over the next couple of weeks, the more likely it seems that NRG are going to be able to get the deals done for Demon 1 and uh, more than likely Ethan as well. And that team is, if that team happens, I'm buzzing to see how that goes. Victor, Crashies, Marved, Ethan, Demon 1. Man, that is going to be a good time. And um, Chet actually is now reviewing the analyst applications. Apparently on stream he's going to do this, the best ones at least. So going to be interesting to see who wins that or maybe it's going to be one of you guys out there and just before we close out here from Wilmite I thought this was pretty cool the first year of the partnership era is obviously over and um, this is how the respective leagues did against each other now we didn't see much of China of course like um, because they only kind of came in a little bit didn't have too many teams this season's going to be a proper international competition but yes 80 games with two different leagues against each other which means only nine matches with the same region against each other so most of the time in the VCT at the international tournaments they were uh, intra or inter I guess region matches rather than intra region matches and as we can see the Americas technically the um the most successful region they were 15 in 10 against EMEA teams 12 and 8 against Pacific teams 4 and 3 against China so I want to see how this develops over time because you know, China's a bit of an interesting one because they only came in briefly and uh, they lost more series even though their map count doesn't look too bad. Mainly against the Pacific, they struggled a fair bit. But um, this season, on a full season, what's this going to look like? Are the Americas still going to be on paper the strongest VCT region, which technically they were, despite the fact that EMEA had Fnatic? And how's this going to go? Because as it stands, this is the order of the strongest regions, Americas, EMEA, Pacific, China, which is probably accurate, but um, it doesn't tell the full picture of how good certain teams in those regions are but very much interested to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comments below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and i'll see you next time